This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Thank you, Squarespace, for supporting local drag. Now, y'all, it's very dry. It's almost kind of like my bootleg videos. Hello, everyone. It's your favorite local bedroom queen, Yuhua Hamasaki, and I am back on my channel. I'm not even going to pretend that it's a new day because obviously it's filmed on the same day. It's about working smarter, not harder. Bootleg opinions. Now, in a previous video, I talked about my first impressions of each winner. If you haven't seen that yet, go to the link in the description. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about the looks that they won in for the earlier seasons and the looks that they stepped down in. It wasn't until, I believe, season five was when they actually had the queens walk down the runway and give up their crowns. Now, PSA, I just have to put this out there because the definition of drag has changed so much over the years for myself the judges, the show, and hopefully you too. Now in this video, I'm gonna focus a little bit more on the looks because I feel like it's a little bit more interesting to talk about compared to the entrance look. Because in these finale looks, a lot of them have one year to grow, make their money, know and expect what the fans are looking for, and their drag have elevated. Now first winner was BB Zahara Bonet from season one, the first ever winner ever. Now in these two looks, I see Nina Flowers and also BB Zahara Bonet, I think I'm gonna say that Nina Flowers is a little bit more interesting and I prefer hers better. But not to discredit BBs, I think that her type of drag, that this aesthetic, the updo of the pageant hair, the drag jewelries, the pageant gown, very fitted, I think it represents of what a pageant competition is. So I think that she wore the exact same outfit that most pageant queens would wear, and it did represent the type of drag that most Americans associate with, which was drag pageantry. And that's what people wore 15 years ago, so I think it works perfectly for that time period. Now, judging by today's standards, it's a little bit safe because it is a two-way stretch fabric, cut down, the arms, but she did do excellent in her season and she slayed for that crown. Our season two winner is James Ross, who at the time goes by Tyra Sanchez. I think that these two looks over here for the crowning, I prefer James more than Ravens. I think that Ravens was more for a lip sync. Personally, I just think that they should let the queens change for the crowning and also the lip sync because sometimes when during the lip sync and also the crowning, their outfits don't really match the situation that they're in. James looks beautiful in these two color combos. It's so soft. I think when I saw the finale, what really bugged me was when they announced the winner, James started having breathing problems. I don't know if y'all remember, and nobody went to help except Raven. They all just kind of sat there and just kind of watched the stuff happen and kept the tapes rolling. Like, come on, somebody help her. Maybe that's just me. But I have said in a previous video is that, that a lot of James Runways during his season still lives up to today's standards. Speaking of outfits that don't match the situation, here's one of them. We have Raja here in a lip sync outfit. I just don't think that this is a crowning outfit at all. Manila's looked more like a crowning outfit, but I feel like during the lip sync, her outfit was kind of tight. She couldn't really move or lip sync, so I feel like, I guess, Raja played a smart in here. So I do wonder what Raja would have worn. This was the last time that they filmed it privately in the studios before moving to a live audience. I think it's beneficial that we do the finale in an audience because the producers get to see what the crowd is really generally thinking instead of the same four or five people in a room of what they think of who did well, if that makes sense. I don't know. And also you get to see a live reaction from the studio audience. It's almost like an experiment. I know, can we mention Manila's side eye? I thought it was so iconic. I know a lot of the people thought that it was really mean that she did that, but imagine this. You're filming for two months in a confined area. You haven't talked to anybody else. You fight for blood. You're stressed, you're tired, you're hungry. You almost made it to the finale. Wouldn't you have kind of done the same thing too? I don't even blame her. Up next is the winner of season four, Sharon Needles. This is the first time they've ever done a live taping I think that the outfit that she wore at the red carpet for the finale looked better than this. It was like a tux and gown. It was more interesting than this because I feel like with this, it's just kind of like BB's dress. It's just a dress with not much details to it. I kind of wish that she wore the outfit that she wore for the red carpet instead of this and change them around. Come on, Mimi, change it around. Change your costume, change it around. Next is the winner of season five, Jinx Monsoon. 
This is the first time ever they did a live finale and also invite the previous winner to come back and walk it down the runway to give up their crown. When I first saw this look, maybe I'm a New Yorker. I saw the crown, I saw the green dress, I thought Statue of Liberty. She looks so gorgeous. You can obviously tell that she has traveled. She has made her money. She has learned a thing here or two about outfits. She's got a headpiece, a well-done breastplate, corset, and gown. This is a fantastic look for Jinx because I don't know if y'all remember her looks on her season. They didn't really cut it. One thing that I would change about this look is the hair. I think it could have been a little bit bigger with the bun, but nowadays she makes it a little bit bigger in the back to proportionalize out with her outfits, and I think that they look better. Next up is Bianca Del Rio from season six. She is giving you glitterama, mama. The inside scoop about the glitter is that she finished getting ready early and she was tired of waiting for them to call her in. That she just added more glitter to the face, to the hands, and next thing you know, she is giving you glitterama, mama. Let me know if y'all heard of that story before and if that myth is real or not. What this look is giving me is drag. Priscilla, queen of the desert drag. The designer who made this costume is Ray Ortiz, also went on to make lots of fabulous costumes as well for some of your favorites, actually. Next up is Violet Chachki from season seven. I think everybody gasped when they saw Violet in this look. The crown is built into this head, this dramatic gown with the crystals, fashion, drag, extravaganza, and eleganza. I remember thinking to myself that, damn, this costume is not stretched fabric, and for the time period, seeing something that is not stretched is kind of rare. Because when it stretches, the measurements don't really have to be exact because it gives. So like, let's say if it's a little bit tight, you can still wear it. That's why a lot of the fabric that you see in the workroom stretches. So like these queens, when they do a sewing challenge, they're actually given a leg up already. So if you do bad in the challenge, you know, that's on them. But again, we all have different weaknesses and strengths. I know one thing that really stuck with me that Jinx said during a roast was this. I don't know if it was the exact same words, but it was of this context. So she said it like this. When Sharon Needles won Drag Race, there was me to fill in the shoes. When I won Drag Race, there was Bianca Del Rio to fill in the shoes. When Bianca Del Rio won Drag Race, there was <laughs> Violet Chachki? The f something of that sort. Look it up. Anyway, no shade to Violet Chachki. That was just something that just popped to my head and I thought it was really funny. Season 8 winner Bob the Drag Queen is next in this royal blue dress that speaks to everything that she stands for. Glorified and more. This is gorgeous. She had beautiful accessories that matches her beautifully. And one thing that really stood out to me till this day that she said that was really funny was when RuPaul asked her to give up the crown, Bob was like, I want to keep it on, please. She pulled a Valentina reference. Now, we were robbed of seeing this look on her original season. Again, her looks on her season were not her best, and her makeup wasn't her best either. And this, like a while ago, I posted a video while I was at the Viacom holiday party where they had me perform. I posted the video as a joke saying, on my way to speak to the manager to put me back onto All Stars or something like that. And Bob says, with no padding? And I was like, yeah, you want Drag Race without wearing makeup. So there's that. And so, like I said before, we all have strengths and weaknesses, and mine is padding, and that's a Kimura Black reference. Up next, we have season nine's Sasha Velour in this alien creative fantasy look, which I absolutely love. Do you? Now, if Laganja was here, she would have said, it's giving me purple people eater realness, because everything she sees that's purple is purple people eater. We got this alien headpiece, the red serpent, the spraying of the colors to carve out her body, and then the stones on those colors, the regal shoulder pads, the makeup to match the whole aesthetic to give us the outer space creature alien that is here to pass the crown. Now this look is made by Diego Montoya, who also went on to make a lot more drag race looks that you probably recognize. Love this look on Sasha Velour, and that is something not to joke about. Club Legend Art Theater! Season 10, we have Aquaria. And I was actually there for the crowning, actually. So I flew into LA in the morning, and then we filmed from the afternoon into the night. And then after the filming, I went back to my friend's hookup place. Yes, I was just that desperate and broke. And I showered there, and then I de-dragged, I packed my stuff, and left and went back to New York City. I was really that bootleg. About Aquarius look, there is a concept. I got colorful bird of paradise, Phoenix Rising, who is ready to soar. When the curtains open, we saw her in a position ready to move the wings. The colors are all very vibrant and the bodysuit is spray painted and stoned with different color feathers that gradient and gives great depth. 
the makeup to match the outfit, and this hair just works gorgeously with the outfit. And y'all know how I feel about shoulder pieces or details or shoulder pieces on the side that you should have the hair up or hair out of the way because otherwise it interferes with the details or the pieces that you have on the sides. So great job, Aquaria. Aquaria and this looks, looks mythical, Fantasia, and Creature. I love it. Next up is season 11's Evie Ali. Now this was filmed during the pandemic and the first time it was filmed virtually. When Evie passed the crown to Jada, if y'all remember that part, I'm not gonna lie, I chuckled a little bit because it was so cute and so camp and a little bit bootleg. That's something I would have done too. Now we have Evie Otley in this gray look. I kind of see Monsters Inc. in this too. I don't know if y'all see it, but I do. <laughs> this look is made of socks and sweatpants and it represented the time that we were living in. We were all indoors in those garments. And at the time, fabric stores were not open. And even when they were open, like around the summer of 2021, I remember going to the stores trying to get materials. There was just a huge shortage because a lot of stuff were not getting shipped. So for what it was, I think Evie did what she can, but I do wonder if the stores were open and there were the materials to be made, what she would have done instead. And at the time, we were social distancing, so having designers be near you was kind of impossible. So I kind of do wonder what she would have done if the sources were available to her. Season 12, we have Jada Essence Hall. Oh my god. Is this wine color piece on her gorgeous and stunning or what? She looks like a grand priest. The LGBTQIA plus version, of course. She's got this ginormous hat which is very dramatic. It matches with the tall shoulder pads, the train at the bottom. I also want to point out that this dress does not stretch at all, so it needs to be measured to perfection. I enjoy the hair swirls coming out too. This look shows growth, that she's also not just a pageant queen, but that there's more to her. Now, during the finale, I don't know if it's true or not, but I kind of have a theory that the audience that we see are actually just crew members or paid actors and they're just kind of cheering and screaming at a green screen. What do y'all think? Last up is season 13's Simone. Now, there's a lot of controversy about this look, whether if it's good or bad, and the general opinion from the audience is that it's kind of split in half. My take on it, I think, is that it's a great look, but I just don't think that it's a stepping down look. Now, for the Simone fans that are here watching that want to disagree with me and also want to punch me, hear me out. Pause for one second, okay? I think that this look has eleganza, but I don't think that it really has extravaganza. Now, to be honest, when I first saw this look, I thought it was a wet top and also a pair of pants. It wasn't until I saw the actual video of how it was made that it was actually sculpted onto her. And the pants were made from different jeans with stones all over it. From what I saw on the screen, the camera lens picked up about 35% of that. And I'm sure it looks better in person with the stage lights, but I don't think that we have the technology to pick that up on camera yet. Here's some tea about stones on screen. Plastic stones actually read better on television than the actual crystals, whereas the actual crystals read better in person. Now again, with this look, I think there's eleganza, but not much extravaganza. I actually prefer her red carpet look better. There's actually eleganza and extravaganza. I know that people said that this is who she is, but I feel like she can give us a little bit more. And from the night that she won Drag Race a year ago, those outfits also represent who she is, but those also gave eleganza and extravaganza. And I think that that's what's missing for me. I thought she could have done a little bit more, I feel like, based on what she has shown us on her season. And that's a wrap, y'all. As for Willow Pill's look, we're gonna have to wait till next year. Let me know what y'all think about my opinions and what y'all have to say if you agree or disagree. I welcome you all. Bye, y'all. Till next time. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform to create their own websites. Come and create a community on your Squarespace website with a full commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies, and likes. You can also categorize, share, and schedule your posts via their powerful blogging tools. Also, displaying posts from your social profiles so your followers can share them too. And my favorite, the Squarespace extensions that helps manage inventory, promotes products, bookkeeping, filing taxes, shipping items, and more. And the cool part, you can also connect your audience through gated members-only content to generate revenue for yourself. You can manage your members, send out email communications, and leverage audience insights, which are all super important and easy to use on the platform. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use my link in the description to get 10% off your first purchase of a domain or a website.